Well, we're glad to have you here, and we welcome the, those from the Western Washington DX Club that are joining us. Uh, our uh, workshop, workshop leader tonight is Randy Fultz, uh, K7TQ. I think almost most of you probably know Randy from Moscow. Uh, he's past president of the uh, Spokane DX Club and chaired the last two uh, DX conventions that were in Spokane. Uh, he's well known for mobile contesting, recently Kansas and then, uh, of course, in our salmon run uh, with Jay and uh, Jay uh, uh, WA Zero WWW. He's also a ridding master, I can attest to that. He was third in the United States as a single op low power uh, in 2012. He won the Northwest Division ARRL Ritty Roundup in eight, uh, 2018 19 as a single op unlimited low power. And I can tell you, uh, he's a joy to watch when he contests. He's just, he's just so smooth. And so uh, we're going to turn it to him and um, he's going to uh, share his screen and uh, take it from there. Thank you, Mel. Does everybody have my screen? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> the screen is basically the same layout as uh, Jay showed on Monday night. And uh, I'll point out a few things, amplify on some of the things that uh, Jay talked about. First thing I want to do is open a, a Telnet. Well, let, let's start, uh, start the, the file or start the log. We'll just let the, uh, con the, the practice go, but we'll get into that shortly. So you go over to file, there, and if it's a new log, then it's that one, but I've already got the one open. So open a log, and up at the top it says CQ Worldwide Ready. And then like uh, Jay said, you fill in all these things, single op, low power, ready, fixed, assisted, 03ID, Idaho, and then uh, associated files, digital function key file name. So that's where you pick up the, uh, the, the, the file uh, that has your uh, uh, um, function keys on it. Then down here is call history file name. And if you go to change and click it, and over here, this box says there's one already with that name uh, on N1MM site. Do you want to use that one? So we'll say yes, and it will load it. And uh, so lots of calls are in there. It helps, out, helps us out quite a bit. Say OK. And then we're good there. And the next thing to look at, I think, uh, or the next thing we'll look at is the Telnet window. I've got two screens, I'm only showing you one, so I have to bring it over. So there it is, it'll come up over here, and I'm already connected to uh, WS7i, and here's the spots coming in. Let's look at this filters for a minute. Band map DX spot timeout in minutes, 30 minutes is the default, or at least that's what I have there. That's a pretty long time, particularly for this practice session, we'll get a lot of stale spots. So I'm gonna change that to five minutes. In the real contest or the big contest, maybe 15 minutes, 10 minutes is more appropriate. Certainly, I don't wanna see 60 minutes, uh, there'll be too many spots that are old. Then one other thing, slide this open a little bit more so you can see it. This tip, filter as many spots as you can at the cluster. It lowers the work, work the, it lowers the CPU workload on your computer. So all those things about what band you want and what states you want are best done uh, at WS7i, not via this. This doesn't pass those things down. It puts all the workload on your computer. So I've already made all the changes that I wanted to uh, using VE7CC program. So there's, there's the Telnet. This big box over here is the entry window. And 
couple of things here. I've got the, a clock with seconds shown here. On any N1MM window, or almost all of them, if you right click in the window, it will give you a menu of what uh, is relevant to that particular uh, window. Function key panel, that's these things down here. And the action key, Jay had those on. I usually don't look at them. They're more for, I think anyway, they're more for using a mouse. I don't use a mouse. Uh, I try to avoid it. I learned how to type in eighth grade and I still know how to do that. Uh, bearing information, user information. There's the time, the, the thing that brought up the clock. And then uh, this is the band panel, another way to change bands. So those are the, the things of, of, of interest there. Uh, check log is over here. Uh, it matches up calls that either you put in or that come in over here uh, from, the, from the Telnet window. Uh, it's, it's helpful. Digital interface window here. This is a window from Two-Tone. I don't use N1, M I don't use uh, MMTTY, I use two-tone, but it's, you can use whatever you want uh, or whatever makes you happy. Um, so there's all the decode. We'll go over some of those useful things here. Here's the grab window. Um, I've not had good luck with the grab window. Too much junk goes in there, but others can use it too. Band map window, which I think Jay didn't talk about, or at least didn't show much of. We'll talk about that. And then over here is the available MULTS window. All of those things come off of this window, this setting right here window. So you just click on it and, and up come those windows. Okay. Um, what I like to do and what other people like to do, uh, so I've read anyway, is start at one end and work down to the other one. So you can either move your, the dial on your radio like I'm doing there, or sort of like, Joe sh uh, like Jay showed um, Monday, you can also just type in 80 in this case, that's the start, more or less the start of uh, the RIDI portion on 40 meters. And you can see over there on the band map that it jumped to 7080. Okay. Now, Jay recommended that we get uh, MULTS first, so you can either move the mouse and click on it, and what happens is it puts his call in this on deck, that's what it is. this is called, above the entry window, the on deck. Not transmitting right now. If you mouse over it and just leave your mouse there, you can see that it was spotted zero minutes ago by WA7LNW. Uh, it's kind of helpful to know where those people are. That guy is Jack in Utah. Uh, I, don't, I don't hear anything there, so we'll go to the next one. And I'm not quite tuned in. The little spikes in the uh, spectrum window were not lined up with the long yellow bars. Uh, there he is. So I can move my dial and there I've got him lined up. All I have to do is hit the enter and it puts, puts his call in the window, sends K7TQ. There he is. So I just space over and it filled in a four in the Kansas, so I just hit enter. That's going to send his call 59903 in Idaho. And then Eric comes back and he thanks me and off to see, for him to see Q. There's another way to do it. You don't have to use the mouse. If you do control and the down arrow, it'll go to the next one. And that didn't quite decode, right? Um, how long you want to stay on somebody is up to you. If you're really in a hurry, and wanting to make uh, rapid lots of cues you don't want to mess with. 
waiting for somebody very long, but for a demonstration, I'll wait a little while. And I, that's enough waiting for me. Uh, so I'm gonna go to the next one. Again, control and down arrow. Somebody have a question? Comment? Okay. Um, the calls over here are color coded. Uh, the red is a multiplier. The, gray, the red is a double multiplier. The green one is a multiplier. Um, a double multiplier would be a, a new state in a new zone. Nothing there, so I'm going to control down to the next one. Nothing there, so I'm going to control down again. I'm going to keep controlling down until I find somebody. That's probably, well, I'll keep going down, but now I went to 7,300 and down here at the bottom of the entry window, it says no more spots. So I'm gonna type in 80 and I go back up to 7,080 and control arrow down. There, tune that in a little bit better. That's the person who answered WA7LNW. There's a QRZ. I'm gonna hit the enter key just on general principle to see if he comes back to me. You see it moved the, his call into the entry window from the on deck window. Nope, we're not having any luck there. An Alt W will wipe out the call, Alt W, or um, some people make their function keys have uh, um, wipe on them. I like Alt W. Uh, another control down arrow. WN4, W4RN. I hit the enter, all I did was hit the enter key, sent my call. Sometimes, here comes something. He didn't hear me, I'll try it again. All I did was hit the enter key. As long as the uh, cursor, the vertical flashing bar, or the vertical bar is in, uh, in, in that space, it will send what's in yellow, which is uh, K7TQ, my call. There, so I hit the space bar. All right. Well, I don't have any power to increase, so I'm gonna send my call twice. So I move back to the to where his call is and I hit the enter key two times. So it sent K7TQ and then K7TQ again. And I'll try one more time. I, did, I hit the enter key. Ah, okay. Uh, excellent. I can't hear you. No signal. Um, yep. Um, cool. <laughs> and it's cool that you know what to do, but not cool that you can't hear me. Yeah, okay. No, that's kind of weird. I can't hear a thing. All right. I'm going to wipe that call out oh, with an Alt W. And there's a big space right here between that call and that one. I'm gonna 
dial to there. I don't see anything. I'm in search and bounce mode right here. I hit the F1, which sends QRL, it's the frequency in use. I wait a little bit, nobody says anything. The switch to run, so I hit the enter key. I got a red box around this, which means the radio's transmitting. There's my call. CQ, CQ, CQ worldwide, K7, TQ, K7, TQ, CQ. No DE in there. Nobody came back. I hit it, the enter again. Four seconds or so, I think, is a, a good time, a reasonable time to wait. You need that call out there so people can see you. Um, there, here comes an answer, W4RN. So I type in W4RN, I hit the enter. That little check mark means that uh, the call is in the, uh, in the super partial. And it also appeared over there in the check log. Here comes the answer. Five Virginia, I space over, there's the five. And the, the Virginia's not there, so I type in VA and I hit the enter. Thank you, K7TQ. I don't put the CQ at the end, you can. Um, generally, if you see somebody say TU and then they're called, that means that they're ready to accept another one. Nobody, I waited a little bit in addition to, to talking to see if anybody wanted to tail in. Here comes another call, a little off frequency. If I hit the F5 or the F8, it'll send again. Here, the person's gonna try again. NA3M, I type that in. I hit the enter. I wait for his reply. And then I hit the space bar. There's the five in the Maryland. I hit the enter again, NA3M, thank you, K7TQ. Nobody answers. I hit uh, CQ or I hit the enter key and I'm CQ and again. I'll do a couple more of these then uh, I think that's enough of that. All right, a couple things to mention over here in the available mulch window, this big tall window, window over here. Any of these columns up here can be sorted. Right now, it's, uh, they're just in here uh, in the call. If, you, if I expand it a little bit, here's the spotter, here's the time, frequency. So if we want all the, uh, all the, 80s to be together and all the the 40s to be together you hit the, the frequency one and that sorted them put all the 80s together and all the 40s together and then of course it would put all the rest of them together as well if you have a a beam sometimes it's useful to hit the direction now then all the jas will be together and all the uh, europeans will be together for u.s stations it doesn't make a whole lot of difference uh, then I used this in the practice session earlier today. Uh, this sorts them by time. So the, the most recent spots are at the top. We'll just click on that. You'll notice down here, my uh, radio changed to 40 meters. I hit the enter. I'm calling him, move this aside. This 
probably is my call, but I'm not sure of it. But I'm fairly far off his frequency. I'll wait till he calls again because the peaks didn't match up on those yellow lines. There. Uh, hit the enter key. There's my call, although that the, the K didn't make it. Eight, he's not a state, so that's all he needs to send. I hit the enter key. ZF1A59903 Idaho. And there's the CQ, so he got it. Everything was, was good on that. Uh, I, I hit the control up arrow and I'm moving up the band, uh, the band map. I don't hear that one. This WTOO, that's really 599. This letters and figures, if you put the mouse over something that you think is not right, it will decode it or it'll flip it uh, to letters or windows. So there's, right there is where it appears. So soon you learn to recognize it. TOO is 599. Jay Townsend taught me that one. I'm waiting for him to finish up with this other guy. Somebody else is calling him too. I don't know that we'll be successful. No. Nope. No. Let's uh, let's go to eighty meters, and uh, we'll have some of some of locals call. Several ways to do that. One of them is with the mouse. Here's the pointer, and well, first I probably ought to wipe out the. W0LSD. Here's the band or the uh, the bands. If I click on the 80, it'll go to the last frequency that I was on on 80. So you can see right here it switched to 80 meters, and then the band map is switched to 80. Control up arrow moved it up to W6 or N6WM. I don't hear him. Go down, AC0C. I'm going to tune him a little bit with my dial. He sends CQ. I send, whoops, probably I ought to switch to 80 meter antenna. That would be better. I saw that my SWR was all goofy. So while it was sending, I hit the escape key, which stopped the sending so that I could. Uh, I could uh, switch the antennas. Whoops, there. I, so I saw that I was doubling with him, so I hit the escape key again. Now, hopefully, I'm sync, yeah, and I'll be in sync with him. There. Now I got a good SWR. There it is. So I hit the space bar, and there's the four Kansas all filled in. I hit the enter, sends my information. He thanks me. Control down arrow, in three QE. A little bit off. All right, that's WA7 LNW. I had to type that in and I hit the enter. Do it again, because he didn't hear me. There, he heard me. Uh, five, uh, space over, three Utah, that's good. 
there he stopped sending, so I hit the enter. And the seven didn't decode right, but that that K call and BQ that's me. Besides, he uh, he sent QRZ, so he got what he needed. Uh, I'll control down arrow again. W six SX. I don't hear him. WD six T. I don't hear him. There's one that's not spotted. Well, I'm looking for a, yeah, that's the person that's trying to get them. Looking for a clear frequency. That looks decent. Who else has their, uh, their radio on? Mel? I'm a send CQ. So somebody answer me. I'm at 3590.76. And I've been spotted. You can see that on another window that's off this screen. There we go, WD, 6T, I type it in, I hit the enter. Comes back, I space over, there's a three, the California nut fill in, so I space over uh, and type in CA and hit the enter again. Nobody replied, so I hit the enter again. N6 WM, type that in, hit the enter. Three California, I hit the enter. I spaced over and then I hit the enter. 7 CD in, in, the, in the junk right here. All right, I didn't decode that, so I'm gonna hit the F8, sends again. Yeah, my problem, Randy, is I'm absolutely lost now where I am with these function keys. Hit the F2 key. Uh, you don't have it defined in the normal way. Um, no. Yeah. I just the, uh, used I just used the macro that uh, Jay had sent out. That's the F two key. Yeah. You agree, Jay? Yeah, 
have twos is normally the exchange. Well, that's what I got in F2. Do, do an Alt Z. Uh, Alt Z. And you did bring up a little window and your radio come on? Yeah, it says pass frequency. Well, hit the escape then. Control Z. Nothing. Nope. Nothing on Control Z. I have it. Okay. Obviously, I got screwed up macros. <laughs> I have that same thing on a uh, auto hotkey. I've reassigned it to a different one. Watch my watch your screen. This is what should come up. So, see the red box around it. So I can type Randy. It's showing up right here. Uh, so I would type zero three wa. Whoops, went in the wrong place. Uh, oh, because I hit the escape. So three wa space, and it sent it. Um, all right, yeah, your macros aren't as good as they might be. Yeah, okay. Um, the, the, other the other thing, Randy, where you apps, where it's just you're, you're doing great because you got all these wonderful spots coming in. Uh, I telnet it into Jay's server and I'm not getting anything out from spots. So like my entire spectrum display is blank. Nothing's Pro happening. Do you, in, in uh, for his uh, cluster, do you have checked RBN or, uh, that's not the right thing, spots? What, what is the right phrase, Jerry, to get the RBN to show up? Set uh, slash skimmer. Uh, where do you enter that? I don't, I'm not following, I'm sorry. Bring up your telnet window, Randy, and show him where you are. Yeah. I mean, you're, it's not on. First, I have to, okay, I'll do, I'll show you where it is. First, though, I got to uh, get off of this one. This is the easiest way to do it in my book. Bring up V7CC, connect. Skimmer, that right there has to be checked. Now, that's not in N1MM toolset, is it, or is it? No, it's not in N1MM. It's oh. in the program VE7CC. So you've got that running along with no. N1MM? Oh, no. okay. No. Okay. Um, Again, I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying to use the tool set that's in the N1MM, the telnet window. I do it here, you probably can do it in uh, N1MM, but I don't know how to do it. There's a command there. I don't see the telnet window, in. There, now you do. Right here, right here at the top, just type in set slash skimmer. First, I gotta get up back to you. Right. Yeah. Okay, I just did that. Type in show DX100 and it'll give you lots of, or it'll give you all the last hundred spots. So, so just no slants or anything there? I'm not, see, I, I have never used a packet cluster before. It's always been without, it's quote, it, without right assist. When you, when you first log in, it tells you how to do it. <sighs> okay. Where to now, Jay? You're, you're talking, Jay, but you're muted. Yeah, see, I, I, I went show DX30 and it says invalid command. Do you see the type window, Randy, right above that, right there? Yeah, this show one? slash DX. Oh, sla slash, slash DX slash 100. S 
Okay, so I get a list in the Telnet window, but the spectrum display doesn't populate. Well, you just saw Randy's populate. Yeah, so that's why I'm asking what the... Uh... Well, you, do you mean this window right here? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Window. All right, that's the band map window. Yeah, oh, the band map window and the available multipliers on mine are blank. Because nothing All right. can fit in. Back in the Telnet window, yeah. are you seeing things like I'm showing with these little pound signs? Uh, I'm trying to match yours to mine. Nope. You got different than I have. Those pound signs means that the skimmer is turned on. Right. So you do set slash skimmer. And I, uh, I'm not... I got the slash skimmers, but I didn't get the first part, Jay. Set. There you go. Earl, S. Or skimmer, or skimmers. Yeah, that's it. That, you're good. So do, do that, John. I just did. Now you should get spots with the little pound sign. Yeah, K3PA pound sign that just popped in. Yep. Why? What? I'm just curious uh -huh. why w what you get on your screen and what I get on my screen, uh, it should be synonymous, I would think. We're, we're both into the same server at the same time. No, yes, we are, but I've got different Randy filter has... set. I'm only looking at uh, the states of Idaho, Montana, Utah, Washington, okay. and maybe Oregon. I guess if, I go, if, I'm if you haven't have... said anything, then you're looking at everything. I guess I got to get familiar with how these uh, how these spotting machines work then, because I'm, I'm I am quite lost there. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. That's the purpose of this is not to have you lost, but to get you unlost. Yeah. That's probably why my RIDI scores are always so stinky on there, and I get so frustrated because I have no idea where to find these guys. You're just you're working them one after the other because they're all keyed up for you. I mean, they're stacked up and yeah. ready. Oh, yeah. It's a whole lot easier this way. This is, what's, this is what unlimited means. Uh, you don't have to be it. You don't have to do it this way. You have to find them yourself. That's, well, it's not un unlimited, but essentially that's what it is. Yeah. Um, okay. This is the yeah, fast, John, this is JW. John, this is JW. I'm getting zero on my band maps too, so apparently my filters don't match Randy's either. Ah, okay. I'm with you. Okay. All right, let me sh I'll go over that one more time. I'm going to disconnect here because I can't be I can't get into Jay with the same name. Two different instances. This program right here. You download from the web. And the name of it's VE7CC cluster. Is that just the whole name, Jay? Uh, so here's where I'm going to connect to. So connect. And it automa it's automatic. It already tells him my name. So yeah. it knows who I am. If you S scroll back here, Randy. Scroll back this and tell you all the skimmer set, the login. I'm sorry, I didn't catch all that, Jay. I type login message right here in the, just the left of announce. Left or right, right, right. Login message, the tab. Oh, okay, yep. And it'll tell you how to set the skimmer up. Yep, right there. Set skimmer to enable skimmers on both CW and Ready. But it's also a check box. Right. Somewhere. Now I don't see it. It's on the DX window. Yep, right there, right there. So, 
this is the first one of interest, I think. We don't want anything but the US and Canada. And this is rejecting, it says reject here. So you check all of those except Canada, Canada, and the United States, and then you tell the cluster. So, well, first you can do the North America. Those are the only ones we want to hear from. Then in states, I only want to hear from Idaho, Montana, Oregon, Washington, Wyoming, and Utah, and British Columbia. Because all these East Coast stations, they can hear Europeans long before we can, so you're going to see spots that there's no way you're going to hear. I don't do California or Arizona because they're so far south compared to us that they pick up 10 meter uh, openings uh, that, that we don't hear either. So these are the states that I hear. So these are, this is pass. So you check those and you tell the cluster. Okay. Then for bands, this basically is CW, this basically is RIDI, and this is basically sideband. So we're after RIDI ones on 80, 40, not 30, yes for, for 20, not uh, 17, yes for uh, 15, not 18, and yes for 10. But also, because Europeans are uh, low on 40 meters, you need to be able to see these down here between 7 and 7040 in order to hear Europeans, as well as lots of US stations. And then I leave the 80 meter one the same way because at least it used to be JA uh, really bands were way down in here. So to hear or to see spots for JAs in Ritty, I leave that one open. And then I don't know why my 10 meters one is open, but it is. So you, you check those, you don't want any sideband stuff. You don't want any of the warp bands. And then this is, this is reject, so I'm checking the ones I don't want. And then I tell the cluster, you push that button right there. Now then you've filtered out a bunch of garbage that you're never gonna be able to hear the, the spots for. Okay. okay. Anything else you got to add on that, that, Jay? Yep, yep, yep. I haven't downloaded this, but I'm following the concept. You're trying to narrow down the, the spots. I mean, there's probably billions of spots out there. You just want the ones that you can manipulate, the, the ones that would be of advantage to you. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And, and uh, some of this is in the N1MM Telnet configuration. It's just not as granular or as detailed. You can't fine tune it as much. Got it. That's probably where I was getting wrapped around because I'm looking at the N1MM telnet window and it's not telling me anything. No, the, uh, the two attachments that uh, Mel sent with the original and maybe the other one too, the original announcement for this meeting, uh, in those I have basically what I've told you on setting up uh, the setting up a cluster using N, using VE7CC. Got it. Um, Thank you for that, Randy. This is, uh, this is sure. the, the real meat and potatoes for me because this, this is what's been holding me up. Yeah, th this and how you set up all the infinite number of details on MMTTY or the, the fewer ones on, uh, on um, two-tone are the are either the hard things or the ones that uh, are not don't seem real straightforward okay now then when i go back to tell that i just reconnect and you can make this automatic i don't have it that way so it's asking for the login so down here these are like macros that types in k7tq and then there we go. Okay. And cool. then I'm going to, this doesn't have to be, but you don't need it because all that information is 
is here in the band map and in available modes. Okay. Very good, thank you. There's one more, it's called on CQ. I quit, I hit the enter key. There it comes back. Zero 03 California, it's already in there, so I hit the enter. After he finishes uh, sending, sends my report. And here hopefully comes the acknowledgement. Yep. So we're done. Okay. Hey, Randy, I've got a question there. Sure. So when you were basically going there, you, you really only had two keys, right? F4 and F2. Uh, yes. No, F5. Oh, I did never see that one lit up. I'm sorry. Okay, I must have. If I type in W7ABD, then what's lit up is F4 is going to send my call. Oh, because you typed it and didn't use the grab. Yeah, see if you, I've never been able to get this grab to uh, not have a bunch of junk in it. There's a whole bunch of settings here. All these things that would make you think that it would work well. But I've not had good luck with that. But certainly you're welcome to try that. And if, uh, if it works for you, let us know. See, here's one RX windows add to grab window. Um, then down here, only grab master SCP calls and previously worked in current contest. I checked that during the practice this afternoon and I got nothing in there. Um, clear grab window on CQ. QSY will clear grab window and main receive window always. So there's a bunch of things that apply to that, but I'm successful, and then there's these that Jay talked about the other day. Then the other one, Jay, here's how you made that, uh, you made the MMTTY window only have the, uh, the lizard U and the, uh, the spectrum. There's normal and then small control menus, control buttons. But I don't use that uh, thing. Uh, so then sc scrolling, I, I don't think, I, I don't know if I mentioned that, if you remember in Jay's, he had these so that they rolled. Well, I like the most recent information to be at the bottom. So scrolling does that. Okay. And then you save this and it blacks out, temporarily blacks out some of the windows, but they come back. Jay, this is Chuck, N7BV. Do you use um, the right mouse click in the decode window? Will if you click on a call sign, it'll put it in the uh, transmit window. Yeah, I was going to do that next. So if you go to this one, yep. Yeah. In the, in the digital interface window, choose setup, and then down to this strange looking one, it says right click equals return, not menu. Remember I told you if you right click on most other windows, it will bring up the menu. But if you click on that, now then if you right, if you right click, it will send whatever's highlighted. So I'm gonna just right click, and it sent K7TQ. Did the same thing as enter, but it was with the right click. So the idea behind that is you left click on a call sign like that. It was not gonna put my call in there because it's smart enough to know that's not right. But you, right, you left click on the call sign and then you can immediately right click 
and it will the left click will put the the call that call here and the right click will do the same thing as hitting the enter key so you can just mouse it off so it's it's like a video game well i got lots of garbage there well it's not garbage but it's some of the mode um i think well there's still 10 minutes left but most of the people have left Somebody go to 3590 and send me, send a call. Mel, you can do it. That was a single tone. I, I had two tones here. Do it again, if you would. Okay. I'm seeing a single tone. Uh, it's coming up. I'm hearing it as two, and it's coming up as two on my deal. But I'm, I am pointed exactly the wrong direction for you. But um, oh, on eighty, it shouldn't matter though. I wouldn't think so. Yeah. Um. All right. There's the W7CD. So I left click it and see it put it in the window. And then I just stay right here and I right click it. So I'm, I'm searching pouts and so I'm trying to answer them. That's not the exchange that I want to see. So I'm going to hit the F8 using the mouse and send again right there. All right, we'll play like uh, you sent me the three and the WAs, but I here, well, I can click on the WA and it filled it in. So you put it right there. I clicked on that and put it in. Then I hit the, the right mouse and it sends my exchange. So use it, yes, using the mouse, you can do all these things if you uh, choose that. I did that for a couple of contests and I'd rather type, but certainly this works just as well. Uh, and it, you can jump, jump around and have a lot of fun. We're nearly out of the contest and I've gone through things a couple of times and have made 10 contacts. A couple other things perhaps worth looking at. Here's one that I have on another screen. It's my score. So on the 80 meters, six cues, on 40 meters, four cues. But that information is also right here in the, uh, in the entry window. So you don't really have to have that one. That's called the score window. Another nice one to have is this one, it's called the info window. Here's some, some rates for the last 10 cues, the last 100, which there haven't been, the last 60 minutes, and the last 53 minutes. And also this information that says I was spotted and when. So that's kind of a nice one to have. And then this is particularly nice to keep you going. It's been a minute and 40 seconds since the last QSO. Those are not things that you need or that you have to have to be uh, to do your first couple of contests. Anybody got any other comments or questions?
Uh, I've got a question. Sure. Actually, I've got two. I missed the answers to. Uh, what was the, the check mark after the call up there? That means their call is in what location or where is it at? That means that this call in the super partial check database. See, it also appeared over here in the check. If I type in uh, a busted call, it has a question mark. That might be a legitimate call, but it's not in the super partial check. And where is it getting that information from? You download it by doing this, tools. The third one, download and install latest check partial file, master SCP. So you check that, it goes off and it finds it, brings it back, puts it into N1MM. Gotcha. And the other one I missed was that, <clears throat> that trick Jay taught you, where you hover over the letters and figures. When I, oh, um, appears letters and figures. And if you hover, if you put the mouse over something, it will convert letters and figures. You can from letters to figures because on an original teletype machine, the numbers started with Q as one, and then W was two, and then E was three. They just went across, went across. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. In order to get those, some extra characters had to be sent to, to do the shift. But, it's, but those characters don't always get decoded right. So sometimes one, two, three comes out QWE. But if you put the mouse over it, it will flip it to the other thing. Now there's nothing on here that, that's wrong. Well, there's, there's a 599. If it, was, if it didn't get the, the, the conversion to numbers, it would have printed TOO, which it showed right there, which went away when I moved it up. Okay? Gotcha, I follow you, thanks. Now then this green bar, I should have mentioned it earlier, if you click on it, it turns yellow and it stops the movement of this window until you click on it again. So if you wanted to see something farther back, you can stop the window from moving and then you can move it a short distance. And then hit it again and it comes back. Well, okay. Um, these are some more macros that, uh, that you can program if, if these aren't enough for you. Oh, one other thing worth mentioning. Right now I'm in S&P. So if I hit the F11, it will send Idaho. But suppose I'm in S and P and I just want to know what this thing is. So if I hit shift, it changed these to the run macros. And if I hit the F11, it sends state. So the shift will flip the macros the other way from S and P to run or from run to S and P. That's a handy one, particularly to get the state if you're running or, or for whatever reason. Okay. Anybody else? Randy, uh, why don't you go ahead and put your screen like you normally use it in a contest? I know you made it simple tonight, but I think some people might enjoy seeing how you actually have it normally. Okay. Uh, 
another decode window, another instance of a two-tone and its decode window. And uh, then I also have this one just for funsies. It's a, map, a world map with the Terminator on it. And then I have a third decode window that I leave off the screen, the, the display, but this is what it's seeing. This is a gritty window. It's another decoder. Then I have the, uh, the score. Actually, I have these usually in the other order. And then uh, one more. I, I keep the log window off the screen on the other monitor. There it is. Randy? Just a second. Multitask. Ah. Uh, <laughs> here. Okay, and then one more. There's my rotor control window. So that that's my main screen normally. Go ahead with the question. I'll click on your main two-tone setup font tab. What's on the main two-tone what? Click on the setup. I don't understand your question. File setup help. Click on setup. Oh, oh. File, there's nothing of any no, no. use. Click on setup. Oh, yep. And then settings. Squelch on top. Yeah, yeah. Or squelch Click on. on. Settings. 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 Okay. There you go. Now that's why your grab doesn't work right there. You've got because your, you've got, you've got your filter set really wide. The one was set at two K. The first one you clicked on. No, it's the display width is a nine hundred. Well, uh, and you're using how wide a filter? Whatever's the the default for radio on my radio. So you think if I, well, the reason I have this at 900 is I like to see the skirt. And not only are you seeing the skirt, uh, you don't see the skirt. That's the size of two tones filter, which is why you continually print garbage too. See the garbage? Well, that's this one doesn't seem to have a, a squelch, but I tell you, switch two tone to about five hundred and you'll. I did five hundred and three. Have to do both of them. Now there's nobody to, to decode, but all right, I'll try that. Okay, are there other specific questions? If not, I'll do a little bit of a wrap up here in a minute. Okay, uh, I will put uh, on the user group, I already put out uh, Randy's uh, explanation of how he sets up, but I can repeat it if you want, and I'll put out his macros uh, for this contest. Um, if, uh, and then I'll, uh, a couple hours from now, I'll have the video up of this present. If you wanna go back and look at something, uh, I'll have the video up and I'll send the link to that. Uh, for the guys in um, 
Western Washington Club. If you want any of those uh, documents, I can either send them to John or somebody, or I can you you can email me and I'll send them to you. Uh, I, I I could put any of them you want. I guess on on the reflector since I'm a member of both clubs. Anything you want me to send? Okay. Okay. Uh, another question for Randy. Go for it, John. Um, Randy, do me a favor. Um, uh, take your mouse down to the, your uh, your logging operating screen where you have your uh, function keys to find, and do a, a a right mouse click on those to bring up. The, there you go. What is the significance of some of them being in blue and some of them being in green? The blue ones are the ones that go with uh, CQ with the run, and the green ones are the search and pounce ones. That's interesting because mine are a little different. <laughs> um, some, you know, the blue ones are all my runs, but my, my search and pounce ones, F1 and F2 are blue and all the rest are green. Do you have exactly 12 lines for the, uh, what you your own, uh, uh, run? Um, on run, I do not have 12. Interesting, again, I'm, I'm, using, I'm, using, I'm using J's, and it's just F1 That's through F9 and just F12. So I have to have F, all of them, F1 through F12, at least labeled, even if there's no functionality? No, 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 no. The label is immaterial. You must have 12 lines without comments that those are the uh, run keys. The next 12 lines without comments, and a comment starts with a pound sign. Are got it, got S &P it, oh, okay. Yes, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay, light bulb is on, thank you. You bet. Uh, any other questions or comments? We said we'd run an hour, we're just a little over that. Randy, I want to thank you so much for uh, doing uh, this tonight and showing people. I think we all picked up some ideas and hopefully everybody will give the contest a try. And uh, okay. Well, I enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully people picked up a few pointers. Uh, Mel? And I'll uh, certainly try this uh, narrower. Uh, I have one more question, Randy. Don't go. Go. Oh, somebody else had a question first. Oh, I was just to say, Mel, I, I put my email in the chat if you could send me the, the stuff. Oh, okay. Let me uh, just let me grab it real quick where I get it. Oh, yeah. Randy, can you show me again where you got rid of that, uh, that MMTTY stuff? Oh, all the uh, the buttons and all that. Yeah. Setup. Okay. Settings. Over here. Ah. Okay. Okay. Great. I'm sure what you had was small. Yeah. 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 yeah since I don't use it, it says normal, so well, it doesn't. Yeah, I don't actually apply. use it either, but yeah, that's where I was looking for to help Mel. So, great. Thanks. Okay. And then the other one that we already talked about is over here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm okay scrolling. Non scrolling. Okay. Okay, everybody. Oh, Jay, did you have an additional comment? No, that was it for me. Okay. Any other comments? Well, thank you for uh, checking in. Nice to see some old friends. And uh, hope you have a wonderful evening. and. Five o'clock tomorrow. Hope you're on the radio. Thanks for having the session. Have a great evening. Thanks again. Thank you. Get a great job, Randy. Thanks, Randy. Good Randy, back. Randy, yes. this is Chuck. You and uh, Mel have a good contest, and hope to see you on. Take care. We'll be looking for you. Good, Chuck.